Welcome everyone to another video. So far in this series, we were able to add new users to our contact list, fetch the last message between two users, and display the online presence of a user. Although an awesome feature that we have in our app is that once a user logs in, he just can't log out. So it would definitely sound good if after one year we go to some investors and tell them that we have over a thousand users and none of them have logged out of the app. But giving a logout button is not optional. Therefore, we are going to do just that. So without any further ado, let's get into it. By the way, before I get into all that, I noticed a weird issue in the online dot indicator. Notice that as I launch the app on the other device, the color of the online indicator does not changes, which means that there is some issue while updating the user state field. So let me address that. If you go over to home screen, then to add post frame callback, the issue is with this refresh user method. So if I go to its definition, you can see that it fetched the user details asynchronously, which means that the user class object is initially null until the user details are fully fetched. Therefore, we will simply need to wait for this function to finish its execution inside the post frame callback with the help of the await keyword. So I'll change the return type of this method to future of type void. Then I'll go back to home screen and just before the method call, I'll write await. So that's it. Now the set user state will only execute after the refresh user finishes its execution. If I try it out now, everything will work exactly as you would expect. When a user opens the app, the online indicator for that user turns to green. Great. Now let's talk about creating profile. If you look at the real Skype, when I tap on that user circle, another screen moves up, covering the home screen. We could simply use a custom animation to navigate to this screen. But the catch is, this screen can also be dismissed by dragging down. Or we can see the previous screen by just interacting with it. To achieve a similar behavior, we'll make use of a bottom sheet. So I'll go over to the user circle widget and wrap it with a gesture detector. Then for the on tap, I'll return show model bottom sheet. Then I'll pass a context, set the background color to universal variables dot black color. Then the builder returns with a context. And finally, we'll return user details container. We would also need to target another important parameter called is scroll controlled and set it to true. By default, it is set to false. Had I not explicitly set it to true, then the final result would look something like this. In our case, we want the bottom sheet to expand all the way to the top of the screen and setting is scroll control to true does exactly that. According to the documentation for this property, it says that you need to set is scroll control to true if you wish to use any scrolling element inside of the bottom sheet, such as a list view, grid view, and so on. Fine, let's define the user details container. Now this part just contains UI, so I'll go over this a little quickly. First, I'll create a file called user details container. Then I'll come inside of it, create a stateless widget, name it user details container. Then inside the build method, I'll return container set its margin to edge insets dot only top 25. Then for the child, I'll pass in a column. Now the first child of this column is going to be a custom app bar. So I'll write custom app bar, set leading to icon button, icon to icon, and pass icons dot arrow back. Then I'll set the color of that icon to colors dot white. Then for on pressed, I'll write navigator dot maybe pop context. Then I'll set center title to true, for title, I'll write shimmering logo. And then for actions, we'll simply write flat button. Then for the on pressed, we'll return sign out. I'll define the sign out just in a moment. Then for the child of this flat button, I'll write text, sign out, set the style to text style, set color to colors.white and font size to 12. Then just below it, I'll write user details body. So we've got three things to define, the shimmering logo, sign out and user details body. I'll start by defining the user details body. So just below the user details container, I'll create another stateless widget called user details body. Then right inside the build method, final user provider, user provider, set it to provider dot off context. Then I'll specify the type of provider that we are looking for, which is user provider. Then just below it, I'll write final user 
then name the variable user and set it to user provider dot get user. Finally, I'll return a container, set its padding to edge insets dot all 20. For child, I'll write row children. So the first child would be the profile photo of our user. So I'll write cached image, pass user dot profile photo, set is round to true and radius to 50. Then I'll give it a size box of width 15, then a column, set cross axis alignment of this column to cross axis alignment dot start children. The first child of this column is going to be a text which contains the name of the user. So I'll write user dot name, uh, give it some styling. So I'll set font weight to font weight dot bold, font size to 18 and color to colors dot white. Then I'll introduce a size box of height 10, set the text to user dot email, style, text style, font size to 14 and color to colors dot white. Moving on to the shimmering logo. So right inside the widgets folder, I'll create a new file called shimmering logo dot dot. Then this shimmering logo will basically be a stateless widget and I'll return a container, set its height to 50, width to 50. Then for child, I'll write shimmer dot from colors, set the base color to the background color, which is universal variables dot black color and highlight color to colors dot white. Then for the child, I'll write image dot asset, assets slash app logo dot png. I've imported this app logo dot png inside the assets folder and I've also mentioned this inside the pubspec file. Don't forget to do that if you're following this step. You don't really need to follow this step. You can simply skip the shimmering logo and just pass a container or maybe a text that says my profile. It's time for us to define the signout method. So just inside the build method, I'll write signout and mark it as a sync. Then I'll write await auth methods dot signout. Here, we can check whether a user has been successfully signed out by setting the result returned by the signout method. So I'll write final bool is logged out. But there's an error, as this future does not returns a boolean value when you await for it. Therefore, I'll just change the return type of this method to future of type bool. Then I'll wrap everything in a try catch block and finally return true. Whereas if we do catch an error, then this method will return false. After that, I'll come back to the previous screen and now the error is gone. So just below this statement, I'll check whether a user has been successfully logged out or not. If he is, then we'll simply navigate the user to login screen. But the question is, how do we do that? There are multiple ways to do it. First is by using navigator.push, but that would be useless as a user can just tap the back button on their device and they will land back to the chat list screen. Although since Firebase is really secure, all the instances of the previous user will be removed and we will not be able to send, receive or even view messages. You might say, well, in that case, we should use navigator.replace. Well, this would also result in the same issue. Basically, we need something that can navigate us to the next screen as well as remove all the previous screen from the navigation stack. Enter push and remove until. This method pushes the desired screen on the stack and removes all the previous ones. So if anyone taps the back button, they would just go back to the launcher. So I'll start by writing navigator dot push and remove until. Then I'll pass a context. Then I'll write material page route builder context and we'll return login screen. This method also takes a third parameter, which is a function of type bool. If this function returns false, then it basically clears all the routes which are below the pushed route. And since that is precisely what we want, therefore I'll write route of type dynamic route. This is basically an argument which is provided to us with this function and then we'll return false. All right, so that's all we have to do. Now, let me quickly test it out for you. So I've launched the app and as I tap on the user circle, the bottom sheet pops up and stretches to the very top of the screen. At the moment, we don't really show a lot of options. We are only showing the profile picture, the name and the email of the user. Now, as I tap on the sign out button, I'm taken to the login screen. And if I press the back button, so since all the previous routes are removed from the stack, so I land back on the launcher. Finally, everything related to profile has been done as well. In the next video, I'll demonstrate how you can save data locally on your device. 
Basically, we'll be saving call logs of our user so that they can get to see the details of the calls that they have made previously. Initially, I had planned to demonstrate it with the help of an SQLite database. But then, recently, I discovered another database called Hive. And if you look at its pub.dev documentation page, you can see the performance difference between SQLite and Hive. Hive clearly leaves SQLite behind in benchmark tests. Although I haven't tried Hive out myself, but it seems pretty cool and a new thing to learn about. I was confused between which one should I demonstrate. And since I'm making the videos for you, the viewers, therefore I thought, why not just demonstrate whatever you want to see. So I made a post in my community tab and I would urge you to go there and just select any one of the options. And with that, the video finally comes to an end. I hope you like this video and if you're new then don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And yeah, thanks to all the subscribers. Because of you guys, this channel crossed the 10k subscriber mark. So thanks a lot and keep supporting. I'll see you in the next one.